In this video, you will learn how to get started with troubleshooting a high availability SAP system using cloud logging. Some of the most frequently asked questions by SAP system administrators are, why did my compute instance restart? Why did Pacemaker restart my instance? Why did my SAP system fail over? Or alternatively, why didn't it fail over? To analyze Pacemaker logs in cloud logging, you should have a basic understanding of how Pacemaker works and its terminology. Check out this blog post for a refresher. This video also assumes you have configured your Pacemaker cluster by following Google's best practices, which you can review in these links for Suzy and Red Hat. And finally, your SAP's instances must already have Google Cloud Ops Agent installed and configured to stream Pacemaker logs into cloud logging. Check out this video on how to do this. Or you can follow this blog post, which provides a step-by-step -step guide to set up the Ops Agent on your SAP system. Towards the end of this blog post, you will find a template of a cloud logging query that we will be demonstrating in this video. Let's take a closer look at this query. It allows you to view the most critical pacemaker actions and events. To use it, simply replace the instance name 1 and 2 with the actual instance names of the two cluster nodes. This query captures pacemaker actions on cluster nodes and resources, such as start, stop, or promote. And since we're troubleshooting, we're looking for operations that have failed along with the other critical log events. This filter includes log entries on cluster membership changes, for example, when an instance becomes unresponsive, and coral sync communication errors. And finally, the last two filters will include fencing actions and their reasons such as loss of cluster nodes or resource failures, and the results of these actions. Let's apply this query to a real example and explore the results. In this scenario, you have observed that a compute instance named HANA primary unexpectedly restarted and you would like to understand why. Here, the instance names have been defined as HANA primary and HANA secondary, and the time has been narrowed down to the time frame of the restart. The first step is to scroll through the query results in chronological order until you can find a block of log entries labeled Log Actions. They describe actions affecting the cluster resources, such as moving a resource from one cluster to another or stopping a resource on a cluster node. Most importantly, we can see that an action was taken to promote the instance HANA secondary to become the new primary host. In other words, a failover took place. To understand the reason for these actions, look at the preceding logs. This log entry tells us the instance HANA primary was rebooted because it was no longer part of the cluster. In other words, Pacemaker detected that a node left the cluster unexpectedly. Typically, this happens when the VM itself becomes unresponsive. Unfortunately, Pacemaker logs won't help determine why it was unresponsive. For further clues, consider investigating the operating system logs. To reboot an instance, Pacemaker will send an asynchronous request to the Google Cloud API, which you can identify by looking at this log entry. This is the fencing action. Pacemaker reports that the reboot operation was OK. This can also be confirmed by the second reset request shown here. This is the API's response to the asynchronous reset request, which was successful. Meanwhile, while fencing the problematic instance, HANA secondary confirmed to have been promoted to become primary host for the SAP system and thereby successfully completing the failover. Now, let's explore when there are no issues with the compute instance, but the SAP HANA database itself has become unresponsive on the primary host. Once again, scroll through the query results until you find the set of log entries labeled Log Actions. The preceding log entries suggest that the SAP HANA system was in an unhealthy state and was not responding. Normally, in such a scenario, the pacemaker is configured to perform a site takeover, or in other words, a failover. But based on this log entry, we learn that the secondary site was not in a synchronized state at that time, simply referred to as sfail. Because of this, Pacemaker prefers to restart the SAP database locally on the original primary instance. Pacemaker logs won't help determine the cause of why the SAP database was unhealthy or unresponsive. For this, consider investigating the SAP logs for further clues as a next step. Let's take a closer look at how Pacemaker determines whether a site is in sfail. Prior to SAP HANA 2 SP3, Pacemaker relied on the Python script systemreplicationstatus.py to periodically verify that the primary and secondary sites are in sync. If HANA fails to respond within the five second timeout window, there can be a false positive scenario where a synchronized HANA system is incorrectly marked as sfail. This is common when the system is under heavy load. As a solution to this scenario, Suzy and Red Hat recommends implementing SR hook. With SR hook, instead of polling HANA for the replication status, HANA itself will report any change to its replication status to Pacemaker. This way, Pacemaker no longer needs to rely on the system replication status.py script to monitor the replication status. 
With a few cloud login filters and understanding what to look for, you can now troubleshoot issues with high availability SAP systems. Check out the description below with more helpful links to learn more about SR Hook on Suzy's official GitHub page, review Google's SR Hook implementation guidelines for Suzy and Red Hat, and how to troubleshoot SR Hook issues. Thanks for watching.